Shalom royalty, it's Ellie here, and I oh, forgot my lights. <laughs> okay, so today is actually uh, January 25th, Monday, but um, I'm probably not going to post this video until Tuesday, which is tomorrow for me. I usually don't re pre-record my videos, but um, I don't want to post more than one video a day, at least not on this channel, um, unless it's like pressing. This is pressing, but that's why I'm filming it now, and it's not something. Like, usually I just wake up and say whatever's on my mind, a dream I had, you know, a message God gave me or something like that, a scripture that is significant for that day or something like that. But um, I just finished reading another chapter of the book, Think and Grow Rich. And this book is very, very significant. It's not so much, it really doesn't have anything to do with how to make money. It's really teaching you how to follow your dreams. And this video is targeted for people who are in America, um, the United States specifically. You know, the title of this video might be kind of bold, but I think it's going to be something along the lines of like, if you're for socialism, you're anti-God. And I stand by that. Uh, if you go to the scripture... Um, Uh, hold on. These are my faith statements from the book um, by Mario Murillo. Let me see. Give me one second. Now, this is how it's written in Mario's book. I will read the direct quote from the Bible in a second, but this is written in the version of a faith statement. You're personifying and personalizing this scripture. Father, the first command you ever gave man was to multiply and increase. I thank you that everything I touch from this moment forward will follow your command of multiplication, that all things I touch and am involved with will multiply and increase for your glory, my Father. Now, uh, let's go directly to the scripture I'm uh, reading from the King James Version. That is Genesis 1, 28. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now, if you're for socialism, or communism, or anything that is not capitalist or republic, that means that you are not producing. You cannot multiply and replenish if you are capping what God is telling you to do or allowing you to do. In the United States, it's very interesting. This country was built upon religious freedom. Granted, you know, we had the whole racism, slavery thing. But now that we are out of literal slavery, we're in mental slavery. So the powers that be have made it very, very clear that racism is very easy for us to get distracted by. Politics are very easy for us to get distracted by. So when hard times come, it's easy for politics to get involved and it'd be like, oh, well, here's our solution. Here's socialism. In America, that simply won't work. You don't have as much entrepreneur, uh, as much of the entrepreneur spirit in other countries simply because, let's just take China, for example. A Chinese billionaire cannot say anything about their country or about their politics. Uh, I don't see much of them talking about their religion either, unless it's a Buddhist, if I'm not mistaken. But they can't say much. So even though they have billions of dollars and a billion dollar company and a billion dollar net worth, they don't have freedom of speech. Whereas in America, you could be a bum on the street and say whatever you want. Okay? So understand something here. Uh, we're in a time right now where I don't think people really understand what's at stake here. People think that stimulus checks and universal basic income is good. But the problem is people are not putting a real time constraint on this because people keep asking, when's the next stimulus check? When's the next this? When's the next that? And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. OK, hold up. All right. How about we think for a moment and learn how we can restructure people generating either their own income or the government be geared towards more towards businesses. And so this is what I'm saying. 
if someone has a business and they were affected negatively by uh, 2020 and the government was like, okay, they already gave those loans out to help help with the employee employees, but that obviously wasn't enough as far as like keeping them staffed and stuff because now they're changing regulations. You can't be close to people. You have to wear masks and all these mandates that make it difficult for some businesses to stay active. So what if the government was to step in and say, okay, we're going to raise the minimum wage before you companies that have the current minimum wage, we're going to meet you where you're at. So in Tennessee, our minimum wage is $7.25, at least uh, that's what I remember from when I was working uh, a couple years ago. Um, And so if the government was to meet them and be like, okay, we'll meet the other, what is that? The $8 to be $15, $7 and 75 cents. The government comes in and says, we'll meet the other $7.75 so you can pay your employees $15 an hour and you still, you know, pay the regular minimum wage until your company can profit enough for you to not need our government assistance anymore. So instead of giving money to the people who don't have financial education, and this is the problem that we're in right now. Honestly, let me pause with everything. Had everyone had emergency kits, had everyone had three to six months money, three to six months worth of savings, uh, had their bills paid up and had excellent credit, even not excellent, adequate, adequate credit. Nobody would even need stimulus checks. Everybody would have been able to just chill at home unless they were an essential worker and we needed their services. Everybody would have been fine staying at home for the first lockdown. That's just the plain truth. And then they could have come up with more beneficial stimulus uh, bills instead of throwing stuff around and arguing for months on end and not being able to come to a consistent consensus on what proper aid for the American people should be. But my main point with this video is saying, if you are for permanent assistance from the government, uh that is a anti god ideal and thought god wants us to produce i don't know if god necessarily wants all of us to be entrepreneurs but he does favor entrepreneurs joseph was an entrepreneur jesus worked with joseph okay we have to follow jesus very literally So whether that means you are an employee and helping to benefit your company, not you're not there to get a paycheck. All of our works are unto the Lord. You are not at your job to get a paycheck. You are at your job to fulfill a service and you are paid according to your works, both literally with physical money and by the favor of God. Okay. As an entrepreneur. You are not here to just collect a bunch of money. You are here to render service to the public. That is a command from God. So I don't really understand um, why people are misunderstanding the law of economics. God set that law in order. This is not something that crooked capitalists came up with. This is not an American ideal. This is God. This is America really fulfills what God wants. It's just a lot of our mentalities are just construed, misconstrued. Even when slaves came out of slavery, they didn't get jobs because white people didn't want to hire them. So they started their own businesses and then hired other black people once they got uh, freed out of slavery. So I don't really see what we're missing here. I get it with the whole COVID situation. Things are weird, but we shouldn't sit here and allow socialism to take over the country. So just think about that. Hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one, Royalty. Bye-bye.